Hello everybody and welcome to this month's Heart Bunch video brought to you by the Health Extension Advocacy Research and Teaching Initiative faculty. Today we're going to be talking about some sleep tips and how to get some good quality sleep. Tim, you want to get us started? I would love to. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, sleep hygiene and how it encompasses both environment and habits. We can pave the way for higher quality sleep and better overall health. So I'm going to talk about creating a relaxing sleep environment as part of your sleep routine, using a comfortable mattress and pillow, choosing bedding that matches your needs and preferences, keeping your room dark, cool, around 45 degrees Fahrenheit, but keep your hands and feet warm, wear warm socks and or mittens and gloves to bed. Keep your bedroom as quiet as possible, using a white noise machine or even a fan to drown out bothersome sounds. Keep electronics such as computer, TV, and phones out of your bedroom. Exposure to stimulating objects and lights can affect levels of melatonin, melatonin, a hormone that regulates your body's internal clock. And finally, use your bed only for sleep and sex. Gabby, would you like to take it over for us now? Sure. So my tip to everybody um, how to get better sleep is try to avoid any anxiety provoking or really high intensity kind of conversations and tasks and things right before bed. Um, you know that exercise gets your heart rate up and gets, um, gets your blood pressure up, but you know, you, you don't want to go to bed. Like they say, don't go to bed angry. Um, it's, it kind of goes along with the fact that, you know, when you're, if, if you, you know, if toward bedtime you do something that um, can be draining or something that can be anxiety producing, like an argument or, or a heated conversation or, or a task that you're doing, then that can keep you up at night. It can keep you stressed out, um, which can really kind of affect your quality of sleep for the night. So that is my tip. What about you, Candice? Yeah, my tip is all about setting up a sleep schedule. So trying to be consistent in when you go to sleep and when you wake up and even on the weekends, which is kind of hard because we love to sleep in, but keeping it around the same general time to get your body in a really good habit and a routine. Um, as well, trying to make sure that you go to bed when you're tired within that sleep schedule. So not going to bed two hours early because you think you could use the sleep, but you're not tired. Um, you do that sometimes you'll end up laying in bed and then getting frustrated and potentially angry and then it's just going to get harder and harder to go to sleep so making a really good routine and a schedule that you can stick with um, will help you get better quality sleep how about you Marin? i'm going to talk about how great exercise is for sleep we know exercise is great because it increases sleep time overall sleep time but it particularly increases slow wave sleep and that's the kind that helps our body repair and do the routine maintenance it needs to stay healthy, keep our immune system strong. There was one time when I'd been really stressed and hadn't been exercising and I decided I needed to exercise. It was just 20 minutes a day, so it doesn't take a lot of exercise. And I didn't notice a lot changing except for my sleep. I slept so much better when I was just getting that regular exercise. But just remember, don't exercise too late in the day because exercise exercise also boosts the energy levels like Gabby was talking about and your body's core temperature and that's gonna make it harder to fall asleep. So you want to close us out Ashley? Awesome thank you Marin. So my sleep tip today is to schedule some relaxation time into your daily schedule as well and some downtime before you go to sleep. You can do that with just doing a few breathing exercises before you go to bed or letting go of the stress of the day and writing in a journal or maybe you want to do a couple meditation activities, just anything that helps you calm and relax your mind and get ready for bed. And those are some things that I like to do every day during my uh, difficult time sleeping. So that's some good sleep tips. And then we also have compiled five sleep hygiene tips that can help you sleep. The first one goes along with Candace's schedule. Keeping that routine with consistent sleep and wake times is really important and it's gonna help you get the quality sleep that you want. Number two, set up a sleep space like Tim mentioned and making sure the temperature is what you want, that it's quiet, dark, and make sure that it works for you. 
Number three, limit electronics in the evening and in your room. Some electronics can emit light that actually does not work well with your circadian rhythm and keeps you awake. So it's important to limit those lights in the evening. Number four, limit late meals, alcohol, or caffeine. Some of these things can keep you up and actually make your sleep less restful. So it's important to be aware of that in the evening hours. And finally, number five, keep a daily routine that includes exercise, like Marin mentioned, meals, and lots of good self-care. Self-care is incredibly important and can really help you during your sleep schedules. And again, that goes along with what Gabby said with making sure you're not having too many stressful things before bed as well. So we hope that you have enjoyed these sleep tips and we thank you for joining us this month for our Heart Bunch videos. Feel free to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook and visit our website to find this video and more at extension.usu.edu forward slash heart. Here's some brief references, some sleep tips, and if you're interested, some websites at the bottom where you can learn more. Thanks, everybody.